The genesis of the Second Sikh War undoubtedly lies in the Treaty of Lahore, signed at the end of the First Sikh War, fought just three years earlier. The Sikh military had never accepted their defeat and felt betrayed by their political leaders. Many in the north that had not fought in the conflict, far from feeling beaten, believed they had been denied their chance to fight. A renewal of hostilities was only a matter of time. The spark that was required ignited in April 1848 at the city of Multan. Two British officers and a Sikh noble, accompanied by a Gurkha escort, were sent to Multan to take over governorship of the city. They arrived on the 18th of April. Two days later, both men had been murdered and the escort arrested. The noble was sent back to Lahore with news of the defiance. News spread quickly and large numbers of Sikh soldiers deserted to the rebels. In Lahore, the resident ordered a siege against Multan and a small force under General William Wish was dispatched to attack the city. However, after early gains, the city held out and Wish was forced to withdraw. In November, a larger British army took to the field under Sir Hugh Gough and met the Sikhs at the Battle of Ramnagar. The Sikhs repelled Gough and then withdrew to the north. Meanwhile, Wish received reinforcements and resumed his siege at Multan. In January 1849, Gough once again faced the Sikh army at the Battle of Chilianwala. It was a scrappy but bloody battle, with British forces taking over 2,500 casualties the 24th of foot losing their colours. But at the end of the day, both armies held their ground. Later, both armies were to withdraw, each claiming victory. At the same time, back at Multan, Wish, with his stronger army, now numbering 32,000 troops, was attacking the outskirts of the city, driving the defenders behind the city walls. In late December, shells from the British hit a mosque containing 180 tonnes of gunpowder, the resulting explosion is believed to be the largest non-nuclear blast in history and killed over 800 defenders. Wish ordered a general assault on the 2nd of January 1849. The attackers successfully scaled the breaches and the battle became a bloody house-to-house -house fight in the city in which many of the defenders and civilians were killed indiscriminately. With the fall of the city, only the citadel remained, but it held out for another fortnight. On the 18th of January, Wish's sappers exploded three mines under its foundations, causing heavy losses and destroying large sections of the walls. The defenders finally surrendered on the 22nd of January, following which Wich marched to reinforce Gough for the final battle. The Sikh wars reached their climax outside the city of Gujarat on the 21st of February 1849. Gough, with the reinforcements, now had an army of 56,000 men, but, more importantly, Wish had brought with him heavy guns, lots of them. The Sikhs, on the other hand, numbered 25,000 with only 60 cannon. Gough had been heavily criticised for his strategies at Ramnaga and Chilean Walla, and London had sent a replacement, General Charles James Napier. But before he could arrive, Gough was in charge, and this time he did not disappoint. The battle started with a three-hour artillery duel in which the Sikhs were forced to withdraw. The British infantry then advanced, resulting in heavy hand-to-hand -hand fighting. The British artillery also advanced in a series of leapfrogging moves that constantly forced the Sikhs back until they finally broke and ran. The Bengal horse artillery, along with the British and Indian cavalry, took up a ruthless pursuit which turned the Sikh retreat into a rout for over 12 miles. The next day, a division under Major General Sir Walter Gilbert took up the pursuit. The remnants of the Sikh forces retreated across the Jhelum River and into progressively rougher country for 11 days, but they were finally forced to agree to British terms for surrender. The army, reduced to 20,000 men and just 10 guns, handed over its arms in a two-day ceremony on the 12th of March and disbanded. It would be easy for a casual observer to think that this British victory was just another in a long line of similar wars over inferior native troops, but they would be foolish to do so. The Sikh army was a well-disciplined, effective fighting force that was heavily outnumbered on the day by both men and cannon. Following the defeat at Gujarat, the Punjab was annexed by the East India Company and subsequently became part of the British Empire. 
as Empire troops the Sikhs stayed loyal to the Crown during the Indian Mutiny in 1857 and their loyalty was crucial in the suppression of the uprising. Later, when the call came in 1914 and again in 1939, Sikh troops were willing and valued members of the Allied Army. With the war over and new treaty signed, peace returned to the region and attention was now turned towards a military award for the troops that had made it happen. The medal for the Second Sikh War, known as the Punjab Medal, was granted by General Order on the 2nd of April 1849 to all troops present in the Punjab between the 7th of September 1848 and the 14th of March 1849, many of whom didn't see any of the fighting. The medal was designed by William Wyon, made of silver and is 36 millimetres in diameter. The obverse features the by now familiar profile of the young Queen Victoria facing left and the legend Victoria Regina. The reverse depicts a scene showing Sir Walter Gilbert receiving the Sikh surrender with the legend to the army of the Punjab above. Below is the year 1849 in Roman numerals. The recipient's name and regiment are impressed around the edge in Roman capitals. The medal was suspended from its ribbon by an ornamental silver swivelling suspender and the ribbon is dark blue with a yellow stripe towards each edge. Three clasps were authorised, although no medals were awarded with more than two since no unit was present at both Multan and Jillianwala. The medal was issued without a clasp to those who were present in the Pujab but did not take part in any of the principal battles. The first clasp for Multan was awarded to all troops present at the siege of the city. In total, 18,967 of these clasps were awarded to European and Indian troops. The second, for Chilean Walla, was awarded to all troops under the command of Lord Gough, who engaged with the Sikh army near Chilean Walla on the 13th of January 1849. In total, 21,453 of these clasps were awarded. The final class, for Gujarat, was awarded to troops under the command of Lord Gough, who defeated the Sikh army at Gujarat on the 21st of February 1849. In total, 32,960 of these clasps were finally issued. The clasps, again made of silver, are decorated with small ornamental roses and usually fitted to the ribbon reading downwards. The medal we have in our collection was awarded to James McCann, a private in the 10th Regiment of Foot. The 10th saw action in the First Sikh War and were present at both the Siege at Multan and the final Battle of Gujarat in the Second Sikh War, and it is therefore somewhat odd that McCann's medal only has one clasp for Multan. The answer can be found on the medal roll for the regiment. This tells us that James McCann, having been president at Multan, was taken ill after the siege and was left there to recover while the rest of his regiment marched off to the final battle at Gujarat. While the men would have been pleased to receive their medals and wore them with pride, the new Queen Victoria was no doubt better pleased with her prize. As part of the treaty, she received the famous Koh i Noor, one of the world's largest cut diamonds. The royal family retains possession to this day as part of the crown jewels and it can be seen on display in the Tower of London. Join us again next time when, for the next campaign medal issued to British troops, we move from India, the jewel of the empire, to Africa and British involvement in the South African Kosa Wars.